Hi there. It's finally time to sculpt my experimental Blythe faceplate. It's a spare face that came with my Clearly Connie custom Blythe. I've brought together some inspiration on Pinterest and gathered my tools. I have the extra faceplate and back ready, and I've used Photoshop to sketch out my plan. My plan is to try using Milliput to add onto the face to create a frowning brow. I recently bought some wood carving tools to try when customising too. So as an added layer of difficulty, I've challenged myself to carve the face using hand tools only. Often I'm asked about the rotary tool I usually use when carving. It's just like a Dremel, although my specific one is no longer made. There are lots of artists using only hand tools though, so please don't feel like you need to buy expensive kit to give this a try. These tools were just five pounds. I always start by sanding the face plates. I'm wearing a mask and using 400 grit sandpaper. Using pencil, I sketch on the main shapes I want to follow, then jump right in. There are curved and pointed tips on these tools, so I just try out each one to see what I like. Starting off, I'm shaping the mouth, removing the excess from each side and making the bottom lip more pouty. I also grab my scalpel to cut into the grooves round the nose. You'll see I use the back of the blade as much as the front. Here I'm using a hand drill to define the nostrils better. Once I'm happy with the mouth and nose, I sand everything well with an 800 grit sandpaper. Now it's time to try the Milliput. You should wear gloves when handling the unmixed material. You need to mix equal amounts of each part very well. Only then can you remove your gloves if necessary. I've mixed up a bit too much, but I'm dividing what I want to use evenly for each brow. It's quite sticky when freshly mixed up, but can be smoothed with a little water on your finger. There will be a very slight join line where the milliput meets the faceplate, so I'm doing my best to smooth this as much as possible. If you have blending tips for me, please comment below. Looking at other people's modified faces, I can see most choose to cover the whole face with clay, so it ends at the edge of the faceplate, leaving no joins visible. Next time I try this, that's what I'll do. Using acrylic paint and thinner, I've tried to match the skin colour for airbrushing. My friend Ben, who is a vintage toy restorer, has given me some great advice for sanding and finishing these darker coloured faces. 
After fine grit sanding, he suggests using cotton wool to buff in a small amount of petroleum jelly. This helps remove the fine sanding residue. Then I can rub the face plates with wet magic eraser. Thanks so much for this, Ben. This definitely came out better than Connie's first face did. Here you see I've airbrushed one layer of paint. At this point, I was worried about the join line. In a moment of stupidity, I thought I could gently sand it a little more to diminish it. But of course, acrylic paint will just rip up when sanded. Oh, I thought I had ruined it all at this point. I just painted and airbrushed more layers of paint until the roughness was almost covered. Not perfect, but good enough for my first time. Alright, it's time to work on her face up. With the airbrush, I've already added a little blush to her cheeks and forehead. Using pastels and a nice soft makeup brush, I add more blushing to her face. You can pick up the colour from paper like this, or just rub the brush directly on the pastel stick. Every now and then I stop and airbrush on a layer of matte varnish. This allows me to add a new layer of pastel on top, building up the intensity of colour. Now I have some watercolour pencils and start adding fine detail to the lips. I blush where the eyebrows will be drawn and I add white and pink to the waterline. With the pencils, I start to draw in the eyebrows. Again, I'm spraying layers of varnish frequently. I go in with white pencil to lighten the brows and with brown I add in just a few freckles. Real faces have imperfections and I think this makes the face up more convincing. It's time for her final layers of varnish. Again, I wear a mask and open the windows. This is Vallejo Premium Matte Varnish for airbrushes, although it can also be brushed on. sign and draw on the back plate now and mark it number six. This is my sixth ever Blythe custom so I'm far from expert but having so much fun learning. Tamiya gloss varnish gives the lips a wet look. And the back plate can get a couple coats of varnish now too. I have Connie's body ready with a new adjustable neck joint added and I've taken off her original faceplate here. The original eyes are threaded through the back plate already and now I can assemble the head. Through the whole process, I haven't seen my experimental face with eyes yet, so we'll get to see it for the first time together now. 
here she comes. Whoops, look at those eyes. I forgot to transfer her T-bar. Okay, let's fix that. There, much better. Oh, wow, I really love her expression. I think the colour match is pretty good and the join line isn't that obvious now either. What do you think? My husband wants me to make an angry faceplate next and I'm definitely up for it. What modifications would you like to see? I might try larger ears too. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this. Stay to the end to see all Connie's close-ups and I'll see you again soon. Bye!